Hello and welcome to Beyond the Politics, a regular examination of the events happening right here in the Quinty region and the people who work so hard behind the scenes to make it all happen. I'm your host, Paul Martin. Joining me, my special guest, now appearing on the show for the second time, Chief of the Belleville Police Service, Mike Callahan. Good evening, Paul. How are you tonight? Good you. Very, very well. And thank you very much for taking the opportunity to uh, have me on the show again. It's a pleasure. You're very welcome. This is, it's different than the last time you were here. I mean, COVID is still a thing, but it, more and more events are happening and more and more opportunities are arising. And we're going to talk about that right now, uh, starting with 30 by 30, an initiative that the Belleville Police Service is enacting right now. Tell us a little bit about 30 by 30. Well, 30 by 30 is a, is a concept that we're uh, working towards to ensure that we have a very, very strong representation of female officers in our police service. So when we were looking at trying to set a goal, we were trying to ensure that we were setting a realistic goal. Mm -hmm. So what we said was by 2030, we wanted to have 30% of our workforce as females. So we're working and actively recruiting uh, women. Last fall, we had a uh, women in policing event where we had, uh, I believe it was 27 females come from the community mm -hmm. to uh, kind of an open house, open doors uh, concept where we had um, female officers talk about their experiences in policing, talk about the benefits of a small to mid-sized service. And it was a very, very rewarding evening. And we've actually had some of those females that were there uh, put in applications for this year. So we're really excited about that. We believe it's a goal that we can realistically, or a target, I should say, that we can realistically hit and to the betterment of our police service in the end. So what would it mean for the Belleville Police Service to have greater female representation? What does that add to the police service and, and how much do you feel that's important to make sure the proper representation is there? It's not only for representation, but I think that um, female officers have so much to offer in the world of policing. And it, it really, um, having a female perspective on, uh, especially, you know, every issue, but when it comes to uh, gender specific uh, issues, mm -hmm. a um, victim is gonna feel much more comfortable speaking to a female than they are speaking to a male, and you may even re-victimize them. And when we look at our whole approach to policing now as being victim-centered, we wanna assure that we're doing everything we can to support that victim. Now, of course, uh, the fire department has Camp Molly, which is yes. trying to talk to people who are younger to kind of get them to envision that kind of career. And these are both uh, agencies, uh, organizations, that have not necessarily been traditionally female-centric. No. So, so uh, is, are, how are you finding this the being receptive, uh, being received, not just within the service itself, but in the community? Oh, very much so, Paul. Very, very much so. It's being very, very well received. And I think that um, we have to ensure that when we're, we're looking at um, the you know, potential hiring base of our community, that we're being very inclusive for not only females, but being representative of our entire community. Mm -hmm. And speaking of which, of course, you can't do any of this unless there are positions available. There are positions available right now with the Belleville Police Service. You're in the middle of a very active recruiting drive. Tell us about that. So our recruiting drive um, has been year after year. We start usually about June, which we did this year, and we get the message out through folks like yourself, mm -hmm. uh, multimedia uh, messaging, and through our website, uh, through different events that we're able to attend, and we really have, um, we, we need our numbers of applicants to increase. And we're seeing a, a decrease in that. And I think it's some of the events that are happening south of the border are mm -hmm. really influencing the perception of policing in Canada. And uh, I heard a really good analogy today and I, re I really liked it. They said, in the United States, the United States places a lot of emphasis on their financial expenditures in equipment. Whereas in Canada, we spend a lot of time in training. Mm -hmm. And we spend more time on training than we actually do on physical equipment. So I think that that training pays off huge dividends. And I think that having better trained officers is definitely the way to go. Now, we're very fortunate here in Babel because we've had incredible support from city council and the police services board. And we've been able to secure body-worn cameras for the officers, uh, some updated equipment. So we believe that we have a really good balance here in Babel. Now, I, it, just before we get back into the recruiting drive, the body-worn cameras was something we talked about the last time you were here, and because then they were new, and they were just rolling out. What has the, the public perception been 
about that because in some communities that's a big deal and in other ones it's not considered as important. H how important have body-worn cameras been here in Belleville and what kind of difference has it made? Well, we, uh, when we uh, were looking at the body-worn cameras, mm -hmm. we did a public consultation, we yes. did a survey. Mm -hmm. And that survey came back indicating that there was very little concern from the community about body-worn cameras. Just on the opposite, it, the community was very supportive of the concept. The interesting thing to note, Paul, is what we've had happen is we have actually now had, um, since this has been, uh, I guess it was September, that we initiated the pilot and it went in full stream as of uh, January of this year, our public, all our public complaints have been cleared up as a result of being able to show members of the public that video mm -hmm. and saying, here's the, you know, this is what you may have alleged and actually honestly believe transpired. Mm -hmm. But here is actual a video with audio of what actually did transpire. So our, our, our public complaints have been addressed, but the most significant thing that we believe that's happened is a training opportunity for our officers. Let's talk about one of the people making those differences, Thomas McDonald, because there, there, are, there are so many stories within the Belleville Police Service of how the service works with the community and the community then comes to the table for the Belleville Police Service. Thomas McDonald is such a wonderful, wonderful uh, man. He is a uh, developmentally capable person that we were able to uh, work with pathways for and unfortunately, I wanted to do this a couple of years ago, Paul, but with COVID, you mm -hmm. just couldn't get around mm -hmm. to it. So Thomas works with us uh, in our custodial area. He, is, uh, he, is, uh, he refers to himself as a self-professed gearhead. He loves turning wrenches, as he calls it. Um, he does uh, work around the building. He uh, supports us with cutting the lawn. He supports us with uh, doing just about any task you can think about. And the benefit that our membership has received from Thomas being there, I think almost outweighs the benefit of Thomas having a, a full-time job. And I'll tell you, there's nobody that comes to work with a bigger smile on his face every day than Thomas. Just a wonderful, wonderful person. Let's talk about some of the, the tips and tricks. One thing that's been happening a lot are fraud calls. Oh, uh, the yeah, grandparent yeah. scam and a lot of other things. People might not be familiar with the, the verbiage that's being used. They seem to be get more creative and more inventive uh, with how they try to take advantage of people all the time. How frequent is this? And, and what kind of advice can you give people who may be dealing with this kind of thing on a regular basis? Well, I can tell you that it's very frequent, unfortunately, and these individuals that are doing this are preying on most times elderly people. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanna clearly articulate that a lawyer or somebody from the courts will not call you and ask you for bail money. Mm -hmm. And so if someone does, you should immediately understand that this is a fraud and contact your local police agency and let them know about it. I'm very proud to report that uh, last week we were able to make an arrest of two individuals who were not from the Belleville area that were doing this. So uh, we were able to uh, arrest them and uh, very glad that they're in custody. Now, as it, you've been, as you said you've been in policing for more than 35 years now. This has been around at some level or another for a long time, but it seems to be increasing both in frequency and also in boldness. Uh, there was a case not that long ago from east of Napanee where it wasn't just calls or mails or internet transfers or credit cards over the phone. They actually went to the person's door to pick up the money. Uh, I had never even heard of that level of interpersonal activity, especially in days of door cameras and other things, but they seem to be getting not only more brazen just in what they're trying to do, but more bold in being able to put themselves out there to do it personally. Is, is, has that been surprising to you? It, it has and it hasn't. There's been a lot of scams over the years, Paul, mm -hmm. and um, it, it seems to be that uh, the sophistication is, is increasing as, as time goes on. But uh, we just need that message out there that if somebody comes to your house and they ask you for money, there's something wrong, Paul. There We're talking about the qualities of what makes a prototypical excellent officer, or at least what you need to do that. And certainly one of the things is compassion and caring, and there were some great examples of that, including one where two officers encountered uh, an elderly lady in need just over the course of the past few days. Can you yeah. tell us a bit about that? Absolutely. When I was talking about the empathy and compassion, mm -hmm. I've, I've got a few examples to show you, Paul, and it, it really speaks volumes about the quality of the officers and that caring and empathetic compassion that they have. So 
on Monday night, we received a call. We had a 71-year-old elderly female here in, in our community that had been, uh, she has the onset of Alzheimer's. She was evicted out of her home um, 30 days ago. She was staying at the Grace Inn, and unfortunately, due to the time frame that the Grace Inn, they only allow an individual to be there for 30 days. So this individual doesn't have any family in the, in the area to support her. So our officers were called as she's on the street and she's obviously not capable of taking care of herself. We brought in one of our mental health uh, care impact workers. She made phone calls, like 10 agencies here and two in Kingston and nobody could take her. So instead of the officers seeing this lady be on the streets where they knew they couldn't get care for her overnight, there was two officers Constable Steve Gnor and Constable Taylor Crawford both reached into their own pockets and got her a hotel room overnight. Wow. Now, if that's not empathy and compassion, I don't know what is. And uh, never looking for them to be remunerated for mm -hmm. those expenditures. I have another great example where we had a elderly couple who was, um, the, the wife had uh, the onset of dementia and we got 911 call that uh, she didn't recognize her husband and believed that he was an intruder. So two of our officers went and they went in and they were able to get her calmed down. And ironically enough, one of the officers, she took a real shine to. So the other officer was out talking to the husband and the officer was able to stand at the door of her bedroom and convinced her to lay down just to calm down and, and get some rest. And he actually sang her to sleep. And the only reason we even found out about it was because it was on his video camera, oh, okay. the body-worn camera. And to me, that just speaks volumes. And I spoke to the officer later, and I was going to bring him in front of the police services board for some recognition and some accolades for just unbelievable caring and compassion. And he said, I don't want that. He said, I joined this job to help people. And he said, this is my opportunity to give back. Mm -hmm. Again, a truly caring individual. We had another member, um, Constable Stephanie Bested, who had worked extensively, and this is over likely about a three year period uh, with a family who uh, the children were, uh, three children were victims of sexual assault. And she stayed with those uh, victims even after the case was over and were able to get them the support and help that they needed to be able to cope with the challenges. Mm -hmm. And although that is not her job at the end of the day, it was her job. And again, that kind of compassion and empathy, and it just makes me incredibly proud to have those individuals working for our agency. And there's many, many more examples of that, Paul, every single day, mm -hmm. but those are just three examples of the great work that the men and women of the Belleville Police Service do. Okay. Well, thank you for your analysis and your expertise. Thank you. This has been Beyond the Politics with Belleville Police Chief Mike Callahan.